Madam Clerk, I'd like to call this meeting to order this a regular scheduled meeting for October 13th, 2015. Please do the roll call. Assemblymember Johnston. Here. Assemblymember Peterson. Present. Assemblymember Domboski. Present. Assemblymember Flynn. Present. Chair Trainee. Present. Vice Chair Gray Jackson. Honored to be here. Assemblymember Evans. Here. Assemblymember Starr. Assemblymember excused. Starr is excused. Uh, Assemblymember Honeman. He's traveling. And Assemblymember Hall. Assemblymember Hall is participating telephonically. Assemblymember Steele is here also. Thank you. Assemblymember Steele, since you said you're here, would you listen to the pledge, please, sir? Thank you, Mr. Steele. There are no minutes to previous meeting. I think the clerk's office, they do a great job. Mayor's report. Mr. Mayor, sir. Nothing to report. Okay, assembly chair's report. It was told to me that Jim Gehrig used passed away either last night or today recently. I don't know if you guys remember Jim Gehrig used, but he was on the old borough assembly and then was on the assembly at the time of unification. He was in the Abilene Community Council. He's going to be missed. He was always somebody could go to and ask him, how'd they do it in the borough days? Remember when they used to be able to stop the clock and still go on with the meeting? So it's a shame we lost him, but it happened. Uh, committee reports. Mr. Steele, I'll start with you, sir. We, uh, we had an inter enterprise committee meeting on uh, Thursday and uh, uh, had presentations from the port and uh, uh, MLMP. I actually... The port, MLNP, and um, we also had one from uh, AWW. And uh, uh, we have gotten some feedback in terms of answers to questions and stuff and emails, but it, they were uh, good reports. Uh, we hadn't had a good, uh, good meeting on that for some time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dombowski, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Our co next committee meeting for Community and Economic Development Committee will be on October 21st at 10 a.m., 4700 Elmore, um, room 170. At that time, we are expecting the unveiling of Mr. Peterson and Mr. Hall's long-awaited cell tower ordinance. Um, and other than that, that's the only thing I have to report. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Flynn, sir. Ms. Elby Gray Jackson, ma'am. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Evans, sir? Uh, nothing to report, Mr. Chair. Mr. Peterson, so how thank are those camouflage cell towers coming? Well, there's a couple of them that are going to be um, installed, uh, and, and then we're going to kind of sit back and take a look and see and see how they handle the Alaskan winters. And so it'll be it's sort of an experiment. Uh, if, if they do well, then, then they'll uh, look forward to probably installing more of those, uh, but it's sort of a wait-and-see situation right now. Uh, and the cell tower group is, in fact, meeting tomorrow from 11.30 uh, a.m. AM to 12.30 p.m. over at 4700 Elmore Conference Room 170. So if anyone would like to come and talk to us about cell towers, they're certainly welcome. Well, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Everybody wants their cell phones to work, but sometimes they really don't like the towers going in. Ms. Johnston, ma'am. Um, I don't really have a committee report, but I'm not sure if Mr. Steele meant to mention that the MLMP construction is went from ahead of schedule to maybe now behind schedule, and the MLMP contractor seems to be on top of it. Um, but uh, they did have a change in management as far as our our contractor, as far as the construction, and it's something that needs to be watched. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Hall, sir. No report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, side note, oh, I changed uh, what we had here. Betsy designed this. She did a great job, so I've had it installed. It's got the U.S. flag on it. It's got the Alaska flag, and it's got the seal 
for the city of Anchorage. So I appreciate all the work that Betsy, our ombudsman, did in that ombudsman's office. It looks good. My thanks. Uh, next item of business addendum to the agenda, if I get a motion to incorporate. Move to incorporate. We get a second. Okay. 9A2, under resolution for action, resolution AR 2015-278, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly, recognizing Filipino American History Month as a time to celebrate Filipino Americans and their cultural and historic contributions to Anchorage, state of Alaska, and the nation. Item 9A3, resolution AR 2015-279, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly, recognizing and honoring Anchorage Police Chief Mark Mew for his more than 26 years of outstanding service to the Anchorage Police Department and 32 years with the municipality of Anchorage. Item 9A4, Resolution AR 2015-280, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly and Mayor Ethan Berkowitz to welcome delegates to the 50th Annual Alaska Federation of Natives Convention October 15th through 17th, 2015 at the Denina Civic and Convention Center. Under bid awards, item C1, a same memorandum, AM 395-2015, recognition award to Nisha Construction, Inc. for Fish Creek Sewer Rehabilitation, Phase 3, 8-inch RC and manhole upgrades to the municipality of Anchorage, Anchorage Water and Wastewater Utility, ITB 2015-C073, $918,188.20, under information and reports, E4, information memorandum, AIM 141-2015, transmittal of the Planning and Zoning Commission record and recommendation of denial for a rezoning application to amend the zoning map and approving the rezoning of approximately 72.66 acres of land from R8, urban residential, large lot, district to R6, urban resi suburban residential, large lot, district, for property described as the north one half of the southeast one fourth of section 25 T12N R3W SM Alaska, accepting the northwest one fourth of the northwest one fourth of the southeast one fourth of section 25 T12N R3W SM Alaska and lot two Ferguson Jones subdivision, plat 98. Dash 178, generally located south of Upper Dearmond Road, west of Canyon Road, and east of Mesa Street in Anchorage Community Development. An ordinance is in resolution for introduction. Item F14, ordinance AO 2015 177, an ordinance of the municipality of Anchorage, Alaska, authorizing and providing for the issuance of not to exceed 79,400. 79,430,000 in aggregate principal amount of general obligation school bonds of the municipality for the purpose of financing the cost of education, capital improvements for district-wide major buildings, systems renewal in the municipality, educational capital improvements for the career technical and vocational facility, education upgrades, addition and renewal of Chester Valley and Sand Lake Elementary Schools and design plans for the Girdwood K-12 school, delegating certain matters to the chief fiscal officer in connection with the sale of the bonds, authorizing the chief fiscal officer to confirm the manner of sale of the bonds, pledging the full faith and credit of the municipality to the payment thereof, and authorizing the amendment uh, to ordinance number AO 2014-76, the Finance Department public hearing requested on 10-17-2015. There's an accompanying 9F14A, same memorandum along with it. The same memorandum number AM 596-2015. Down to the last one, we've got F15, Ordinance AO 2015-118, an ordinance of the municipality of Anchorage, Alaska, authorizing, providing for the issues of not to exceed $53,500,000 in aggregate principal amount of, of general obligation, general purpose bonds of the municipality for the purpose of financing the costs of road and drainage improvements, renovating, replacing, and renewing, renewing park facilities, 
public uh, safety and transportation improvements and related capital improvement projects in the municipality, delegating certain matters to the chief fiscal officer in conjunction with the sale of the bonds, authorizing the chief fiscal officer to confirm the matter of sale of the bonds, pledging the full faith and credit of the municipality to the payment thereof, and authorizing an amendment to ordinance number AO 2014-76, Finance Department. Public hearing requested on 10-27-2015. There is a 9F15A, the same random AM, 597 2015. And I received nothing else to be added to this. Ask unanimous consent on the consent addition of the addendum to the agenda. Ernie? Mr. Hall? No objection. Consent. Okay. Please vote. Let's put on the board. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just going to put it on the board. Amanda, I should have told you. I know, but it's easier if we just put it on the board. I'm sorry. It was my fault. He already agreed to it. So. It should be everybody we've got here. LB, would you? Move to approve the consent agenda. No, did you? You voted yes? Um, somebody voted yes for me. Okay. That's approved. Now let's get a motion on the consent agenda. Thank you, Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. And I'll go those items need pulled for further discussion. Jennifer Mann, can we start with you? Um, A1. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Peterson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No items this evening. Mr. Evans, sir? Nine alpha three. Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Nine elephant two. And on the addendum, nine apple four. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Flynn, okay. Mr. Dombowski, anything, ma'am? No conflicts? Okay. I'm not going to ask twice. No Mr. items. Mr. Steele. No, no items, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Nine A, we got 9A1. We haven't uh, pulled 9A2 because we don't have anybody here. Yeah, we do. Mr. Chairman. Well, 9 8, 2 Apple, Apple, 9, Apple, 2. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And we pulled the other one. Okay, you pulled four? Yes. Okay. So, if you're keeping track, we pulled 9A1, 9A2, 9A3, 9A4. We pulled uh, 9E2. And that should be all of it. So... Mr. Hall, we're voting on the consent agenda. Yes. Okay. Please vote. Consent agenda is approved with the exception of those items. We'll pull for a little further discussion. Ms. Gray Jackson, you pulled 9A2. Sorry. We've got to go 9A1, which is first. Sorry, Jennifer. Resolution Air 2015-276, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly recognizing October 2015 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. You pulled that, Ms. Johnston. Move to approve. Second. Ask unanimous consent. She no objection. That's approved. Mr. Hall? Yes. Okay. Hey, Jennifer. Mr. Chairman, I'll be reading. Okay. A resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly recognizing October 2015 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas Alaska continues to lead the nation in reported rates of domestic violence and sexual assault, and whereas the 2011 Alaska Victimization Survey reports that out of every 100 adult women who reside in the municipality of Anchorage, 42 experience intimate partner violence, 30 experience sexual of sexual violence and 51 experience intimate partner violence, sexual violence or both. 
and whereas Alaska has worked to build a new model to combat domestic violence and the State of Alaska Council on Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault has brought the National Green Dot Program to Anchorage. And whereas Green Dot Anchorage is a project aimed at engaging individual community members in preventing power-based violence in our communities. And whereas the Green Dot Anchorage Initiative promotes proactive bystander behavior to transcend and reduce interpersonal violence in our community. And whereas since the launch of the program, over 5,425 people have been reached through 116 presentations and events. And whereas the Anchorage Assembly recognizes that together we can send a strong message of hope and healing to survivors and prevent future suffering. Now and therefore, the Anchorage Assembly recognizes October 2015 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and resolves to call upon all residents and visitors to speak out against violence by promoting green dot behaviors. Passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this 13th day of October 2015. Thank you so much to the chair and the assembly and Mayor Berkowitz. My name is Susie Pearson. I'm the executive director for Abuse Women's Aid and Crisis or Awake here in town. And I do want to say thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity for the month of October to make sure people are aware of domestic violence. On your desks, I've actually put purple pins, and those purple pins are a reminder that we are not to forget victims of domestic violence any day, not just in October. So I ask that you wear that pin. And also, as part of the resolution, I've had put on your desk the activities for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, as well as some Green Dot stuff. So for many of you, you may not be familiar with Green Dot, but Green Dot is an opportunity for bystanders to stop violence in our communities. So when somebody makes the choice to act with violence, either violence in words or violence in motions, they put a red dot on the map of Anchorage. When you say no, when you make an intervention, when you actually maybe call the police or you tell your friend that that's just not cool to talk about people that way, you put a green dot over that red dot. And I want to say that this month, you have the opportunity to make this Domestic Violence Action Month. So I've given you some green dot pins and inviting you to our bystander intervention training. And I want to say thank you for recognizing us and have a good one. Thank you, ma'am. There are no questions. Next item is item 9A2, resolution 2015-270, the resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly, recognizing Filipino American History Month as a time to celebrate Filipino Americans and their cultural and historic contributions to Anchorage, state of Alaska, and the nation. Ms. Gray Jackson. I move to approve, sir. Second. Ask unanimous. Seeing no opposition. Ernie, you want to vote on yep. that? Okay. Madam Clerk, just let Ms. Reflect was unanimous. I believe Ms. Gray Jackson will be presenting an honor. She's going to present. Reading. You guys come on down. If you got somebody who wants to take a picture, come on up front. You get a better photo going this way. We already gave him fair warning, Mr. Chairman. Okay. You don't have to be there. You can come on over. Ma'am, you can come on over. <laughs> just come right over to where you want to be. Whereas the month of October is significant as Filipino American History Month because the earliest documented Filipino presence in the continental United States was on October 18, 1587, when the first Luzones Indios set first on Morro Bay, California, as part of the crew of the galleon Nuestra Sonora de Esperanza. And whereas the earliest documented Filipino presence in Alaska was on June 17, 1788, when the fur trading ship if Eginia Nubiana arrived in Cook Inlet with a Filipino crew members known as the Manila Men, and whereas the first permanent Filipino settlements be in Alaska began in villages along the southern, southeastern coast in Bristol Bay, and by 1930, Filipinos began to live in Anchorage. And whereas at the height of the salmon canning industry, Filipino Alaskan cannery workers called Alaskeros dominated the workforce with about 9,000 workers, and whereas Filipinos have contributed significantly to the entire spectrum of Alaska's workforce, from mining, fishing, and oil industries, to healthcare, education, to arts and culture, and to Alaska Native corporations, and whereas the, in the state of Alaska, Filipinos are the largest immigrant group and compose 
52% of the entire Asian Pacific Islander population and in Anchorage, the Filipino population is 3.3% or about 10,000 people according to the 2010 census. And whereas the theme for this year's Filipino American History Month is 1965, tipping point for the Filipino American community to commemorate the 50th anniversary of two momentous events, the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 and the Delano Grape Strike, both forever defining and shaping the Filipino American communities in the United States. Now, therefore, the Anchorage Municipal Assembly recognizes and celebrates October 2015 as Filipino American History Month, passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this 13th day of October 2015. Hello, my name is Jessica Patalio and I am a PhD student at the University of Alaska Anchorage. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to really thank you um, all for recognizing October officially as Filipino American History Month. We are all just smiles. Um, it's uh, really huge for our community for this to be officially recognized um, as Filipino American History Month. And so on behalf of some of the students, the Filipino American students of UAA, we brought um, and gathered a few facts about Filipino Americans um, and our significance in history. Um, as a graduate student at the University of Alaska Anchorage, we have three tenured Filipino American professors, um, one, being Dr. E.G.R. David in the Department of Psychology, the other being Dr. Joy Mapaye at the Department of Journalism, and the other being Dr. Gabriel Garcia in the Department of Public Health. And so this is, of course, in comparison to the other universities in the nation who barely have one tenured professor. And so for the University of Alaska Anchorage to have three is a huge deal for um, our community. And our, my other, our other students also have facts as well. Mr. Flynn, do you have a comment, sir? I'll, I'll wait till everyone's done. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, hi, my name is Rachel Golanis. I'm also a UAA student. I'm actually from Dutch Harbor. Um, but today I wanted to share with you guys, back in 1899, during the Treaty of Paris, um, Spain sold the Philippines to the United States for $20 million. Uh, hi, my name is J.R. Carpentero, and I'm also from Dutch Harbor. Um, and I just want to let you guys know that uh, as of the 2010 U.S. Census, there are approximately three and a half million Filipino Americans in the United States. Hi, my name is Luisa Seaman, and I am also from Dutch Harbor. And I'd like to share to you guys that Tagalog is the fourth most common foreign language spoken in America behind Spanish, French, and Chinese. Hello, my name is Monique LaBelle, and I am a nursing major at um, University of Alaska Anchorage, and I wanted to share with you all today that um, according to the 2000 census, Philip, um, 52 million people in the Philippines spoke English, making it the uh, fifth largest English-speaking nation behind the U.S., Iran, Pakistan, and the UK. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Dennis Perez. I'm a UA student and also a member of the US Air Force, and also share a fact about Filipinos. Um, Dama Garcia Buchholz was the first Filipino American legislator to be uh, put in the state. Also, she served um, four consecutive terms from 1974 to 1982. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable Mayor uh, Ethan Berkowitz and the Honorable Assembly Members. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to thank you for your proclamation, but if I may add uh, that we are also actively involved in the political process, you know, and we were once your peers. I just noticed it's uh, not included in, the, in one of the items in the proclamation. And 
Uh, I just want to make sure that because we have students here from Dutch Harbor, it's important that there was once a council member from Dutch Harbor, you know, a Filipino American, Mr. Magpantay. And in Kojak, we have a lot of council members uh, who serve, you know. Uh, I think it's important that we recognize them because you're, this August body, you know, we're all, we were once peers, you know, we were all elected officials. And it's really important that our youth and you know, our uh, scholars here know that we have actively, you know, uh, were involved. Filipino Americans have been vitally, uh, have contributed in the political process in Alaska, not only in Anchorage. Thank you very much, Your Honor. And by the way, my name is Jesse Viscocho. I wear so many hats, I don't want to identify with anyone of them tonight. I'm here as an ordinary Filipino American citizen. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Chair, uh, Mayor Berkowitz, uh, Assembly members, thank you. My name is Dr. Nelson Asada. I'm a perinatologist, high risk pregnancy physician at Providence Alaska Medical Center. And I also happen to be the chairman of one of the Filipino associations, the Alaska Federation of Filipino Americans. And how's that relevant? Well, we bankrolled the food. So um, please enjoy the delicious Filipino food. And even though I'm a doctor, I'm not responsible for your lipids. So let your conscience and your doctor be your guide. Um, the Alaska Federation of Filipino Americans, AFA Inc. Uh, was 12 years old. Um, there are several other organizations in this uh, state that are, that are older, but the, uh, organization is very active in many different political and community events, uh, including Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Filipino Consulate, running health fairs for the public, uh, a whole list of things we contribute, uh, courtesy of the Tudor Bingo, because of the state laws that allow this. We're a 501c3 corporation, and uh, we, in addition to scholarship funds, we also contribute to AWAKE, and we contribute to the Food Bank of Alaska, Alaska Kidney Foundation, uh, Salvation Army, Alaska Child, uh, Child and Health, and other Filipino religious and political community, or religious communities, we can't do political, uh, 501c3. So uh, on behalf of AFA, um, in particular, and the larger Filipino community in the state of Alaska, uh, we'd like to thank you for taking time to recognize um, Filipinos' contributions to this state. Thank you very much. We have some questions for you, if you don't. Please stay here for a few minutes. Mr. Flynn, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. No questions, just a couple of comments. First off, I apologize if I mispronounced <laughs> words. I studied French <laughs> uh, in school. But um, I do appreciate the folks from Dutch being here today. Uh, I've actually had the pleasure of being out there and it was really neat touring some of the uh, uh, fish processing facilities and seeing the many names from throughout the world who had, were successfully emigrating into the U.S. and getting their uh, naturalization status. So it's, you know, been a gateway, just, just like Kodiak uh, has been. Uh, so really very cool. And also appreciate the mention of Thelma Buckholt. Uh, she was a friend of the family, and her son and I are also friends and, and actually <laughs> competitors <laughs> in the business community. I, I, I remember actually he and I had lunch this summer and um, I think we had Calby ribs and and, uh, and uh, I was trying to be a good gringo and cut mine with a knife and fork and he says, I got to honor mom. <laughs> and he picked it up and just started chewing. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to doing that with the wonderful dinner that you Use prepared for us. Thank you very much. And then just the finally, you know, I, I spent some time in Juneau in my misspent youth and, of course, went to City Cafe that, uh, where they had great chicken adobo and, uh, again, has okay. been forward to dinner tonight. So thank you all for being here and thank you for all you do for our, for our community and for our state. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Johnston. I just wanted to mention that actually my seat is up in April. So if there's anybody that lives in South Anchorage, I think it would be great if somebody filed. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for being here. And I just want you to know that this is not the first time that this body has recognized Filipino American Month. We do it every single year, but we've never had so many um, to accept this recognition. So it's really wonderful seeing you all here, especially those from uh, Dutch Harbor. And I personally want to thank you for your many contributions to our community here in Anchorage. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And on behalf, of the, on behalf of the assembly, thank you so much for all you contribute to this town. Because you're one thank town you. because of what you add to it. So thank you very much. Have a good night.
Thank you. Next item in front of us is 9A3, resolution 2015 279, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly recognizing and honoring Anchorage Chief, Anchorage Police Chief Mark Mew for his more than 26 years of outstanding service to the Anchorage Police Department and 32 years with the municipality of Anchorage. Ms. Greg Jackson, you pulled that, ma'am. I did, Mr. Chairman, and I moved the proof. You pulled it. I put E down here, and I should have looked at which one I put down. Ask unanimous consent. Ernie? Yeah. See no objection, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Reflect. unanimously approved. Who's presenting? I am. Oh. Whereas Mark Mew was hired by the Anchorage Police Department as a patrol officer on February 22nd, 1983, and was the class valedictorian of his class, APD Academy 83-1. And whereas, Mark has had a distinguished career at APD, including the following significant accomplishments. In 1985, Officer Mew designed the first APD police report forms. Up until that time, APD had used state reports and the LEIS report forms. He wrote the APD report manual and worked on the conversion from the LEIS to the PLIMS computer system. In 1987, Officer Mew developed a juvenile program with ASD and APD and was awarded a commendation for his efforts. From 1987 through 1989, Officer Mew was assigned to patrol and the Delta Shift program in Mountain View and in recognition of his work was given a commendation in 1988. Also in 1988, Officer Mew was certified as an FTO and an academy instructor and his superior officers noted that Officer Mew's work habits are a model for municipal employees. In 1989, Officer Mew was given a commendation for a significant drug investigation. In 1990, Officer Mew was promoted to detective and served in the fraud and theft units and also became a firearms instructor and continued to serve in the CERT team, the SWAT team. In 1991, Detective Mew was promoted to sergeant and continued serving in CERT as a sniper. In 1992, Sergeant Mew was promoted to detective sergeant and became the CERT sniper team lead. In 1993, Detective Sergeant Mew was promoted to lieutenant and commanded mid-shift patrol, and he was the CERT team commander, which included the CRO, or the negotiators. In 1994, Lieutenant Mew graduated from the FBI National Academy, 176th session, and received FBI Advanced Crisis Negotiation and FBI National Academy retrainers. In 1995, Lieutenant Mew was promoted to captain, and he assumed command of APD Tech Service Division and received training in FBI National Academy retrainers, IACP Less Than Lethal Force Weapons Instructor course, and IACP Community Oriented Policing. In 1997, Captain Mew was promoted to Deputy Chief, and during his, this time, he helped with the implementation of computer systems at APD and was also instrumental in development of Anchorage Municipal Code 8.80, Fees for Excessive Police Responses, which is a highly successful community policing program for the municipality of Anchorage. In 2003, Deputy Chief Mew retired from APD and worked with the Anchorage School District as the safety director. During this time as safety director, he implemented several programs that enhanced ASD's safety. Whereas, on January 25, 2010, Mark Mew was appointed as Anchorage Police Department Chief of Police. During his service as chief, Mark Mew has been recognized and received the Patriot Award in 2012 for his support to members of Guard and Reserve Units, and in 2015, Chief Mew was given the Heart of Anchorage Award by the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation. And whereas, on October 12, 2015, Anchorage Police Chief Mark Mew retired from APD. Now, therefore, the Anchorage Assembly resolves that Anchorage Police Chief Mark Mew is recognized and honored for his dedication and exemplary service of more than 26 years with the Anchorage Police Department and more than 32 years of outstanding service with the municipality of Anchorage. Passed and approved by the Anchorage Municipality Municipal Assembly this 13th day of October, 2015. Well, I'll 
after all that, I don't know there's very much to say. <laughs> Uh, thank you all, uh, Chairman Traney, uh, members of the Assembly, Mayor, uh, Municipal Manager Abbott, all the directors here. Um, and I, I want to also give a shout out to the media and the regular attendees, the, the folks that are here um, every Tuesday night contributing to uh, the, the business of the city, the work of the city. Uh, I want to thank you all. Um, it's been a long run, it's been a great run. I've honored to be a uh, part of this city and I, I just wanna say thank you to all of you. We, I, I've needed all your support, I've always gotten it and uh, the police department has been successful as a result of your work and thank you very much. And thanks to the men and women of the APD. They really made this a, a wonderful experience. Something that, uh, man, what a ride. Thank you. We have some comments, sir. Ms. Johnston, ma'am. Chief Mew, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I always appreciated the way I, I would send you multiple questions, and some, some of them were highly charged, um, some from constituents, not as many from me, but they were charged. And I always appreciated how you responded in a timely manner, in a professional manner, in a really thoughtful manner. I never had to go back and ask you again what you meant. Um, I thought you, you gave me a clear path to, to dis discuss it with constituents and I appreciated it. On a lighter note, um, I hope with your new job, I still see you out on the trails and we uh, don't run into each other on the bicycle, but we at least wave. <laughs> I haven't been on the bike much lately, which is something I'm looking forward to changing. I think we will see each other a lot more now than we have in the last year. Great, thank you. Mr. Flynn, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mews, do you, would you be kind enough to introduce the lovely woman standing to your left? She's very nervous about being here, but this is my wife, Diane, and she's the one that's put up with me for the last 35 years, and uh, this is the... Well, Diane, it is a delight to meet you. Um, I was accidentally introduced to somebody who purported to be uh, the chief's wife, who was actually his daughter, <laughs> <laughs> at a bike to work day event. And so it's nice to finally meet the real one. Uh, <laughs> one of the many places I ran into the chief on the trails over the years. Chief, thank you so much for your service. I don't usually speak up at these things, but um, I have really appreciated, we haven't always agreed, but I've always appreciated your candor. And um, um, for Chief Tolly, just so you know, Chief Mew committed to maintaining foot patrols when we changed over from having APD doing traffic or uh, parking patrols downtown to ACDA. I'm gonna hold you to his promise. <laughs> yeah, sadly he's right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chief. Mr. Steele, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief, um, boy, seems like I've known you forever uh, and I haven't, but, uh, there's uh, one thing I think that's notable that I would like to point out, and that is your handling of some of the uh, some of the violence that uh, that took place uh, with regards to a minority community. Uh, uh, you stepped up, uh, you personally intervened, you talked through it, you changed procedures. Uh, great example for the whole country and. Um, uh, I really appreciated that. I also uh, was lucky to have known you uh, as uh, head of security at a uh, uh, school district, and your work with the uh, uh, the resource officers has been fantastic. It's been a giant success from my point of view, um, and I think we just had an example of that here a couple of days ago. Uh, but uh, I think those are two uh, badges that you ought to wear uh, with pride. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Ms. Gray Jackson, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chief Mew, first I want to thank you, thank you <clears throat> for your service. Um, there were many times that I call you on the weekend and I never expected to hear back from you until Monday, but that never happened. I'd always heard back from you right away. You've always been really responsive um, when I made calls and I really, really appreciated that. And there were a couple of times that um, I really needed your support when I felt a little threatened and you 
always um, made me feel better about the situation. And I really, you have no idea how much I appreciated that, but now you do. But anyway, I wish you well in your retirement. And again, thank you for your service to our community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Thank Dabowski, you. ma'am. Uh, thank you, Chief Mew. Where to even start? Um, when I became uh, an assembly member, I remember um, sitting down with you, and you took maybe an hour out of your time to explain to me SROs, where they came from, how to manage them, really what your mission was. And you know, it was that it was that example. And Jennifer alluded to it. You know, the response and the candor I all have always received from you. I can't tell you how how impressive that was, because when you, as an assembly member, send off a question to a department head, it's nice to actually get a response and it's nice to get one the same day. And I can honestly say every single time I sent you an email, the response was immediate. And I just so appreciate that. You know, your level of um, dedication and service to our community in my eyes is unparalleled. And it makes me so proud that you're from Eagle River. So I did want to point out to you, Chief Mew, that in 2017, Mr. Starr is termed out. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. <laughs> I know a good campaign manager, I'm just saying. Mr. Hall, sir, do you want to make a comment? Only that I wish the chief the very best. He's been an outstanding police chief, and I've never asked anything of him that he didn't deliver. He has no idea how much that's appreciated. He's going to leave big shoes to fill. Mr. Peterson, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to congratulate you on an uh, excellent career uh, in, in law enforcement uh, for 30 years. Uh, is a very pretty long time, I would imagine. And uh, my colleague from East Anchorage, Mr. Honam, is not here this evening. I'm sure he'd be congratulating you as well if he were. So thanks again for all you've done. Chief, thank you so much for all you've done for this town. I saw an incident today with the SRO at West High School where you trained him so well that there was not a person hurt there. And every time the SROs are called out, it's because of all the time you put into making sure they operate the way they should at the high school. So thank you very much, Chief. And could you get your wife to stand next to you so I can get a picture of her so we can put it in the, <laughs> the website for the clerk's office? <laughs> we don't get to see much of her. <laughs> And I don't think you, she's got to see much of you either. So now you've got him, keep him home. Well, thank you all very much. And I know you'll, you'll support my successor, Chris, the same way you supported me. And I know that with uh, some of these laws that we've got coming on in these next few months regarding our new you know, marijuana legalization thing that we're gonna have a lot of work to do. He'll need your support. And uh, I, I ask you to, to, to do that for him. Thank you, Chief. Don't be a stranger. I won't. Thank Stop you. Visit us. Thank you. Next item in front of us is item 9A4, resolution AR 2015-280, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly and Mayor Ethan Berkowitz to welcome delegates to the 50th Annual Alaska Native, the 50th Annual Alaska Federation of Natives Convention, October. 15th through the 17th, 2015, at the United Center. Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, you Mr. Chairman. There's no one here to accept it. I'm going to read it, it into the record. Yeah, we want you to move to approve it. Thank you. Um, move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Ask unanimous. Mr. Hall? Yes. Madam Clerk, say no opposition. That's unanimously approved by the body. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Chairman. A resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly and Mayor Ethan Berkowitz to welcome delegates, delegates to the 50th Annual Alaska Federation of Natives Convention, October 15th through the 17th, 2015, at the Denaina Civic and Convention Center. Whereas the Municipality of Anchorage is honored to host the 2015 Alaska Federation of Natives Convention scheduled for October 15 through 17 at the Denaina Civic and Convention Center and extends the warmest welcome to delegates from across Alaska. And whereas the 50th AFN convention theme is heroes in our homeland. And whereas the Alaska Federation of Natives is the largest statewide native organization in Alaska, representing 165 federally recognized tribes, 146 village corporations, 12 regional corporations, and 12 regional nonprofit and tribal consortiums. And whereas the mission of AFN is to enhance and promote the cultural, economic, and political voice of the entire Alaska Native community. 
And whereas the AFN Convention brings an estimated 5,000 people from all parts of Alaska to Anchorage, and whereas Anchorage cherishes the rich cultural diversity that Alaska's native people contribute to our city and our state, and values its role as Alaska's largest native village, and whereas Anchorage and the entire state are enriched by the week-long dialogues that are broadcast live by radio, television, and webcast to 70 countries worldwide, now, and therefore, the Anchorage Assembly resolves to recognize and honor the traditions and knowledge of Alaska's native peoples and to encourage the citizens of Anchorage to warmly welcome AFN delegates and families to Alaska's largest city, passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this 13th day of October 2015. Thank you, Mr. Ray Jackson. It was a time period where they decided to go to Fairbanks, and Anchorage was bemoaning the fact they disappeared. Now that they're here, I think we need to recognize them and encourage them to keep coming back to Anchorage. Because so many of us have native members of our families that are here, and it gives them a good chance to go down and participate in it. So anything we can do to help the Federation, we're more than willing to do that. Thank you, ma'am. Next time this poll is on page two of the regular agenda. It's item 9E2, Information Memorandum, AIM 139, 2015, Internal Audit Report, 2015-08, Anchorage Memorial Park Cemetery Follow-up, Department of Health and Human Services. Ms. Greg Jack, can you pull that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move to postpone acceptance until the meeting of November 10th. Second. And what's the purpose Thank of Thank you, Mr. Waiting? Chairman. Well, the purpose of this is because there's only one assembly committee that's required by code, and that's the Municipal Audit Committee, and there are three assembly members and three members of the administration. And one of the responsibilities is to look at the internal audits, and if we feel that further review is necessary, then that's one of the committee's responsibilities. Therefore, I've spoken to Mr. Starr, who's the chair of the committee, and we agreed along with Mr. Mboski, who's also on that committee, and I've also talked to the administration. We're going to have an audit committee meeting on October 29th at 1.15, just to have a little further um, review and discussion of this audit, of the findings and the recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other comments from the members? Any opposition to that being moved to the committee? Seeing none, Mr. Hall? None. Okay. Seeing, hearing nobody uh, opposed to that, Madam Clerk, can the minutes reflect we moved it to the committee? It'll come back in front of us in November again. Yep, unanimous. Thank you, ma'am. That completes our consent agenda. Mr. Chair. Ma'am? Um, I think there's some students here tonight that wanted to say hello. You didn't oh, yeah. sign all their sheets first? I, well, I did. I should have waited. We should have them come down here and identify themselves. I think so. Mm -hmm. Come up to the podium, if you would, and give us your name and tell us what school you go to. Come on, there's safety in numbers. Come on, on you sing. All you guys that are back there. Otherwise, she'll take her name off your form. Hi, I'm Connor Kurth, and I go to Eagle River High. Who's left in Eagle River? Go ahead, guys. Ian Bernard, Chugiek. Chase Bear, Chugiek. Stephen Hobbs, Chugiek. Uh, Bauer Hall, Chugiek. Brianna Romache, Chugiek. Ashley Campbell, Chugiek. Harrison Houston, Chugiek. Cody Kerfman, Chugiek. Ben Stewart, Chugiek. Blake Johnston, Chugiek. Tanner Chandler, Chugiek. Hunter Register, Chugiek. Kevin Cormier, Chugiak. Thank you so much. Mr. Flynn. Well, just for Ms. Domboski's benefit, um, I, I've been drafted into um, hosting one of the teams that's going to be at the Great Alaska Shootout this year. And much to my surprise, our host high school will be Eagle River. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be diversifying my geographic footprint. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Ms. Dombowski, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. The, the grass is a little greener up in Chugiak, i got to tell you that right now. But I also want to give out, I don't know if any of you guys are football players out there. Ah, uh, hoorah, you guys had a big win. So Chugiak just uh, demolished Bartlett in the playoff game. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Go Stangs. Okay, double, double nothing at that bet, right? <laughs> thank you. 
next item of business we have under old business unfinished action on public hearing items we did complete the public hearing on 11a ordinance 2015-95 an ordinance of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly amending chapter 3.30 of the Anchorage Municipal Code personal rules and section 3.100 and 0 0.10 affirmative action plan I need a motion to approve that Ms. Gray Jackson Moved and seconded. Discussion from assembly members. See no discussion. Mr. Hall, you want to vote first, sir? Yes. Okay. Please vote. That was approved. The vote is nine to one. I know, but Ernie was. Oh, you got Ernie down there. I didn't know you picked him up. Okay, eight to one. I'm sorry. Okay, we're now going to take our regular scheduled dinner break because we've got community public hearings starting at 6. So let's take our regular scheduled dinner break. We should be back in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Good to go. Call this meeting back to order. Ms. Johnson, do you want to make an announcement on item 14A? Uh, yes. Right now, but if you'd like right. to. <clears throat> Actually, 14A, I'll be postponing to our next meeting on October 27th. Okay. So if you're from Goodwood good, and want to talk about that, we'll do it on the 27th. We're now down to item 13. A, B, and C, Ms. Dombowski. Mr. Chair, I'd like to combine the public hearing on those items. What, ma'am? I would like to combine the public hearing on those items. you have a second? Uh, second. Uh, Ms. Johnson? Do we want to change the order of the day and actually put in um, AO 100 as far as uh, combining the hearing on all four? Uh, AO 100 was introduced at the last meeting. It's, that, it's item 13C is AO 100. On okay, page. that's right. Thank you. Sorry. You're welcome. No okay. problem. Is there any objection to combining the public hearings item 13A, B, and C? Mr. Hall? No. Okay. Student opposition, we've combined the public hearing. What it means to the public, if you want to testify on this, you can come up and testify. Please state your name clearly for the records by your last name and tell us what part of Anchorage you're from. Public hearing is now open. Anybody wish to testify, you'll have three minutes. And this thing makes an obnoxious noise. Your time is up. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jed Whitaker. I live in Mountain View. Uh, Jed, can you spell your last name for us? <laughs> sure. W-H-I-T-T-A-K-E-R. Sorry to bother you, but the reason we do that is because I've got a clerk lady that records all this down, and so we need to have it spelled. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's a number of things in here that uh, don't meet muster in my book. Uh, the use of language, for starters, uh, there's some very curious language here uh, that is, in, is repeated. Uh, for example, maximum building length. The maximum length of a townhouse style building elevation shall be 300 feet. What exactly does that mean? Are you talking about the length of the building or the elevation? One of the problems that we have with the building codes per se is the use of language. It's not clear. It's not direct. This is what confuses developers. Uh, so I think this, uh, right off the bat, this is very poorly written uh, and adds to the confusion rather than clarifies it. Uh, uh, philosophically speaking, there is a, another objection that I have, which is this. Why should uh, people who own land or people who don't own land, why shouldn't the law be applied equally to everybody? In other words, 
if we're going to have, if we're going to allow 70 feet in elevation, um, then why discriminate against anybody because their particular piece of land is zoned a particular way? Uh, a third thing that I think is amiss in this whole menagerie is that it fails to recognize that we don't have subways uh, here in Anchorage uh, and that uh, public transportation is inadequate uh, and that to say to the selected beneficiaries of these ordinances, which uh, I do believe is selective, that they do not have to put in adequate parking is not cognizant of the fact that, that most people in Anchorage uh, rely on a car to get somewhere. And uh, so, again, th these combined ordinances uh, are special interest legislation, and I think that that uh, they should, they're very poorly written, they're very ambiguous, uh, they add to the confusion, they don't contribute anything to uh, solving the housing uh, problem in Anchorage. You know, you might be charitable and say, well, yes, this is a, a step forward. Well, sure, Obamacare was a step forward too, but uh, look at that as the mess that it is. I mean, it did benefit a lot of people, but it also caused a lot of problems too. So uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you for listening, and have a nice night. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wish to testify, please come forward. Hello, sir. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Assembly. My name is Tom McGrath, M-C-G-R-A-T-H. Uh, in this very room in 19, or in 2000, Mayor Maestrom signed the 2020 plan and said by next year we'll have Title 21 taken care of and we can really get uh, rebuilding Anchorage. Uh, I think he's off by about 15 years, 14 years. I support this action. Uh, I know that we need about 18,000 new housing units in Anchorage, and uh, hopefully this will help. Uh, I do have one problem tonight uh, with this action, and it's not with the action, but it's with one assemblyman that is sitting uh, in front of me. In August of 2015, one of uh, Mr. Evans accompanied Widener, a person from Widener Construction, a person from Cook Inlet Housing, a person from Rasmussen Foundation on a trip on a G4 airplane uh, to Wichita and Oklahoma City. Uh, I don't believe that there would be any impropriety in Mr. Evans' part, but there's a glimmer that there could be impropriety because Widener Construction and uh, Cook Inlet Housing could very well be uh, um, rewarded by the passage of this ordinance. Uh, I, th I believe that Mr. Evans should be recused or recuse himself from this issue. Uh, other than that, I, I believe that the issue should be passed. Thank you. Tom, what part of town do you live in now? I live in downtown. Okay. I just needed to get it for the record. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Flynn has a question. Mr. Flynn? Yeah, Mr. McGrath, good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> he's, he's one of mine now, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> well, that's fine. I just want everybody to say what part of town they came they're from. Thank um, you, Mr. Flynn. Mr. McGrath. With, with respect to your comments uh, regarding Mr. Evans, uh, during my tenure as my most recent tenure as chair of this body, uh, there was an inquiry by uh, the Widener Group about flying some assembly members down to Seattle to review some projects. And um, I specifically had an ethics review done around that. Um, and. Uh, it was found that based on the code and the fact that it was an educational tour as opposed to a lobbying tour,
sure uh, it was not a conflict of interest. Um, now, the folk, the Widener folks, was, the, was it also some planning department folks would come along? And the then director, Mr. Weaver, wasn't comfortable with that and said his staff could not participate. And as a consequence, the trip never took place. But we did actually review that specific point. On this one, though, they went on a private airplane. It was the same. Uh, and it was noticed very late on a Friday afternoon. So if the public wanted to participate in these meetings, they, they were precluded from doing so. Uh, I, I just believe that there's a right way of doing things and a wrong way of doing things. If they would have gone on public air or, you know, Alaska Airlines or somebody and met the other people in Wichita, met the other people, and it was publicly noticed far enough ahead that the public could have attended if they wanted to, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. But uh, going on a private airplane, that means that members of certain businesses had access to certain elected officials for many hours uh, for lobbying purposes or or maybe drinking champagne. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank and, you. and we don't know because it was on a private airplane. Yeah. Mr. Evans. Yeah, thanks. Uh, when this, the, the, I think one of the key things to distinguish it from the situation that Mr. Flynn was talking about, in this situation, it wasn't any of the developers that were um, it wasn't their flight, it wasn't their expense, they weren't paying for anything. Um, matter of fact, when it was first proposed to me, um, I thought that the developers were doing this and I declined for the very reason you're concerned about. Uh, the Rasmussen Foundation came back and asked me, they were the ones putting it on, they invited some uh, developers, they invited some members of the uh, administration, they invited me. Um, uh, so I mean, I, having it be an educational thing provided by the Rasmussen Foundation and not any of the developers, I have no problem with it. Um, it is true that, you know, during that uh, couple days, we spent a fair amount of time with some of the developers, but uh, would have spent the same amount of time with them if we had flown down on Alaska Air or if we had met at any place in Anchorage. I've spent, I've had meetings with them uh, individually a number of times. Um, there was no reason actually even to notice this event, I, I think there was, it didn't require a public notice, there were no other assembly members present. Um, so I, mean, I don't think, I, under, I appreciate your concern, mm -hmm. Tom, but um, I just don't think it, it rises to the level that would uh, make it easy for me not to have to vote on this, to put it that way. But even with the Rasmussen Foundation paying for it, uh, United Way was also involved, and the Rasmussen Foundation is a heavy hitter with the United Way. Um, there's other issues coming forward to you, or will be coming forward, about the Rasmussen Foundation. Uh, you know, they're just, to me, there is an issue, and uh, I think that we need to look long and hard before we accept gifts. And you know, a, a lot of people say, well, I had to fly all the way to Wichita, but, well, let me tell you, I would jump at a chance of flying on a G4 to Wichita or any place else. It's a once in a lifetime experience. And just so I'm clear that the, uh, the Rasmussen Foundation provided the plane, uh, I paid for all my uh, hotel expenses before and the Rasmussen Foundation didn't pay for any of that. And true, the flying on the private plane was neat. I'll give you that. Tom, just for those of us that are not as aware of you, what's a G4? Uh, Gulfstream uh, for, uh, I think the highest number is five. Uh, four is a very exciting airplane. Thank you, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Take care, sir. Sure. The bill was to uh, testify in item 13A, B, and C. Please come forward. We combine the public hearing on all three items. You got it. <coughs> well, Sorry, in, I came in late. I was riveted by Tom. Oh. Do you have that plane, Tom? No, no. I have your name, spell your last name, and tell us what part of town you're from. Uh, John Weddleton, W-E-D-D-L-E-T-O-N. What part of town? South Anchorage. Um, I got involved with Title 21 as a mid Hillside Community Council Chair. I spent some time on the Planning and Zoning Commission about three years, and the bulk of our time there was rewriting writing the new code. 
Uh, since that time, I've gone to many and possibly most of the Assembly's Title 21 committee meetings, so I've been tracking it fairly closely. And in the process of writing the new code, it was never, of course, the intent to discourage building homes of any type, you know, single family, duplexes, condos, apartment buildings. Um, but the goal was to, you know, as we grew and these buildings, we had more of these buildings, that it would protect the neighborhoods that they're built in because we'll be doing infill and development, you're gonna take this vacant lot and you're gonna put something bigger in it. How do you protect people's reasonable expectations that the neighborhood they bought into would stay like you know they wanted? Um, and in a growing city, that creates conflicts. So we have design standards to kind of try to find some balance there. So it's a little give and take. The neighbors will get some bigger buildings, more density, but builders have to do some minor things to try to protect the neighborhoods. And I think we got pretty close to that. Now, what we're seeing, and we've had for a while, is a push to get more housing in Anchorage. And the expectation is the supply increase is okay, we have lower cost rents, and that's a good thing. But I worry on AO100 that we went a little bit far, and that's allowing the four to five story apartment buildings next to single family homes. Um, without making any real accommodation um, to the impact that they have. And I find that fundamentally unfair to homeowners. Uh, the current rule for daylight protection is very minimal. Um, and this AO100 basically deletes that in any area in the land use plan map at the highest density residential. Well, if you ask people buy a home, they may know the zoning, but no one knows what this land use plan map is. I mean, it's, it's so obscure. So it's not a fair fight. Um, if we need to loosen the regulations on these apartment buildings, what I would recommend is not doing it um, carte blanche in the highest density residential, but just restrict it to the downtown district plan area, the midtown district plan area, and the core of the town centers. That's really where you want the highest density uh, residential anyway. But to allow it to spread out throughout all of the you know, highest density residential in the land use plan map, that gets you into some long corridors of single family or duplex homes where these buildings don't belong without some type of design standards to protect the, those homes. Um, one other comment is, and am I done? You're done, sir. Um, question from assembly members. There don't appear to be any other questions, sir. Oh, Mr. Okay. Evans. Mr. Evans? Yeah, I just had a brief one. And, and in my time going to the Assembly me, uh, Title 21 committee meetings for the last um, year or so, a lot of the little things that uh, have been discussed and back and forth and the changes made, I think are distractions. What we really should have been working on is making the alternative equivalent compliance routine work. And if that had been the case, I think Widener and Cook Inlet Housing, they would not have been worrying about these little menu options. Operations like that, they're big budget, big money people, they know how to build. They should be doing things under the AEC routine, not worrying about menu options. But that routine doesn't work now, we need to get that working. Uh, we also need to get the user's manual done. And if those were done, we wouldn't be having a lot of the little discussions and the little changes that are in this ordinance now. Thank you. There are no other questions. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wishing to testify, please come forward. Mr. Chairman, members of the assembly, my name is Tim Potter. Last name is spelled P-O-T-T-E-R. What part of town? Midtown. <laughs> Midtown. Sorry, uh, when we did, we did AO 37, Part of the aftermath of that was they have to give us your name, spell your last name, and tell us what part of town you live in. Oh, I remember quite well because I no, sat on the know. committee that suggested how you should run your public meetings. Um, I'm here to speak in favor of 2015-100, which is the item C and is the blended version. And while I'm not in 100% agreement with everything, um, I believe that it is a blended version and uh, has addressed um, most of the issues that I had concerns with. Um, there are some pro proposed um, amendments, uh, one dealing with the alternative equivalent compliance. Um, I would recommend dropping that 30%, and I believe that the narrative that I submitted at the last meeting hopefully explained that from 30% down to 10 to 15%. Um, there are some members of the administration and staff that are concerned that 10% is too low. 
Um, I can tell you that a conceptual plan should be able to get the message across of, of what the real items are that they're trying to pursue equivalent uh, alternatives to in 10 to 15 percent. I don't have a problem having that as a 15 percent requirement within the industry. It would be hard to differentiate between 10 and 15 percent, but 30 percent is definitely um, a significant jump above that very conceptual level where you should be able to get your ideas and your thoughts across to staff and UDC. Lastly, um, there's an item um, way in the back about the planting beds uh, shall be separated uh, from parking spaces and driveways by landscape edging. Um, you know, I, I did explain to Mr. Evans what I thought that was from a zoning standpoint, uh, and I won't repeat it here, but I believe that that goes into the level of detail that has no, no place in our general zoning regulations, even design standards. Having a concern about a piece of gravel rolling out of a eight by five foot landscape area in a townhouse uh, complex, folks, we got bigger issues to worry about um, and we should be addressing those somewhat like Mr. Weddleton indicated. So with those two items addressed and acknowledging on the record, that the test for this at least 15% plan or concept is that it is conceptual, but it needs to be able to portray to the staff and the Urban Design Commission adequately what the alternative equivalent design features are. If it does not or cannot, the staff needs to be able to say it doesn't explain it, it doesn't transfer the information, you need to add more detail and be able to do that. In closing, I just say that I do not believe that Mr. Evans should have to recuse themselves. I applaud the Rasmussen Foundation to be a philanthropic organization that would try and help educate um, assembly members and policymakers on key issues. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There are no questions. Thanks. Anybody else wish to testify, please come forward. Welcome to the meeting, ma'am. Pleasure to be here, Mr. Chairman. It's nice to Chairman. be back here again, by the way. Hello, um, it's a pleasure to be here this evening, Mr. Mayor and Assembly. Um, I've been involved in this area for a long time. Um, this land, the, the land use regulations, oh, I'm Sheila Selkraig. I live downtown, I live in the downtown district. Um, Did you spell your last name? S-E-L-K-R-E-G-G, -G. thank you, Ms. Johnson. And uh, I've been involved in the process uh, associated with land use for a long time and was engagement Comp plan and really what we have here is the land use plan, uh, the land use code is the DNA for the community. It's kind of the pieces come together and it really forms what we're doing. And I I have a I have some general comments about where we are, but then I want to specifically also speak to tying the land use to or tying the density to land use rather than code. And to give you a sense of the potential impact is you should think about Mountain View. Mountain View has four plexes all over and we're now going through and single-handedly kind of removing those four plexes and putting improved development in. And what happened is during the 80s to increase density, we allowed four plexes anywhere in town. And those areas that where it was cheap to do, which was the lower income and transitional areas, saw a lot of four plexes. And those areas went from kind of working class, stable neighborhoods to being really dis destabilized and we are in this process of recovery. And what you're gonna see is the high density areas are East Anchorage, um, they're Midtown, and what you've got here is really you've lost control of maintaining the fabric of the community. If, and for example, if you think about, I live downtown, and I live right next to C Street and I'm near that area between A and C, that's a critical area in terms of how it's developed because what you'd wanna do is extend the quality of life you've got west of it, east. And if you're not careful and you load it up with a lot of high density without a real strategy, there's some really good sections in that, that, that transition area that are merging as quality, good neighborhoods. The way to increase that area would be two-story, three-story uh, density. It'd be stuff you've seen in Portland like the Pearl. You know, you can actually transform a place into an elegant place. You could have high-density entry areas, but the high density might be three, four. 
if you begin to pile big buildings all over town, I promise you will be in recovery. Um, it, you lose control. I mean, you're looking at R1, um, R1A, R2. You, those give you the capacity to build like the hand, you know, I mean, the DNA, the hand, the arm. Things begin to fit together. What you begin to do when you put big buildings is like putting a hand on the back. I mean, you lose the, the structure of a community. So, and I have one other small comment, if I could make it, if I'm... Mr. Peterson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Do you have additional comments? Uh... Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm very sympathetic um, to developers that are struggling with this code, but I'm also very sympathetic to the public in general. And what's happened, I mean, one thing, you know, today you can develop under the old code, but everybody wants to be under the new code because we've allowed more density under the new code. It's a better code for increasing density. But what we've done over the years is we've, we've dropped away and let go of a lot of the things that ensure that that new density is quality. And just what, I, what I, I've been in the room as an assembly person, the contractors have been at the table very carefully making sure that there was flexibility in this. And there's so much flexibility in this that in, in another community, the code would be one page. In our community, the code's seven pages. And then the, the real contractor, the ones that are out building the house, they've come and looked at this code and it doesn't function. So I would say that you should look carefully at this code in a year and a half two years, and I think that if it's really having trouble, you should take a trip across the United States. You should find a community that's a northern community that has a code this thick. You should consider bringing it here, adding the chickens and the dogs, and um, doing something much simpler that would be clearer and actually ensure what we really want. I'm really worried about the kind of mishmash we've created. Thank, Thank you. you, Sheila. Good to see you again. Any bills wish to testify on this item, please come forward. Anyone at all? You look like you want to get up, so come on. Welcome to the meeting. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the Assembly. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to this tonight. My name is Margaret Auth. The last name is A-U-T-H. Um, what part of town are you from? Pardon? What part of town? Do you I from? live in Spinard. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. And, and actually, I worked on the West Anchorage District Plan, so I'm very familiar with the way that we were trying to um, work with the, the different needs of West Side as it's building a, up a lot with um, a very vibrant Spinard Road in the northern part. But you know, I was downtown today and I looked around at the area closest to the legislative offices down on 4th and nothing is 70 feet there. Those are, those are the most six stories. And we have a proposal in our neighborhood that is asking for six, six or seven story buildings in close proximity to a residential community. And it's my backyard. It's next to Northwood Park. And my concern is, is that this is what will happen if suddenly any vacant land is suddenly going to be looked at as high density because it's filling a need. But I guess what I'm thinking is somebody who's always been active in the community is whose needs are we filling? I mean, we have a very good community as we are and we need to build and we need to infill. But I think that something is lost because sometimes when I go to areas of town that have multi-story apartment buildings, there's no cohesiveness. There's no sense of community. I've, done, I've seen that in South Anchorage in the Jewel Lake area, and I've seen it on Lower Hillside, and it's block after block of apartment buildings, and they're not even to the six or seven stories that's being proposed. So my concern is, is that, as Sheila said, that we'll be moving towards something that may get out of hand and we'll have a different look and feel and sense of community if we don't do this more deliberately and think about the needs as they come up, as, as opposed to just rushing something through. And I think the public needs to be more involved. I think that as a committed public member, I certainly care what happens in my community. And I'm sure there's others out there who would like to give their voice to it too. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. There are no questions. 
Any bells wish to testify? Welcome to the meeting, sir. Thank you. Uh, my name is Robert Auth, spelled A-U-T-H, and I'm a resident of Spinard. I'm a past president of the Spinard Community Council three different times. I am concerned about <clears throat> this particular ordinance, AO 2015-59, because of the height uh, issue in R4. As my wife said, we have a proposal for six of them on one lot right next to single-family residential subdivision that's been there for 50 years. And now right next door you could have six 180 people in six different 60-story buildings, 60-foot buildings. Uh, and there's nothing in this that would protect the neighborhood. In fact, I'm not sure there's anything in here that would keep it from, from being approved. Um, and that, that's a concern. Uh, and compatibility, especially this Bernard Road uh, district plan, has a limitation on commercial buildings in the central part of Spinard Road between Wisconsin and the railroad track. The commercial buildings can only be 35 feet, but then the residential right behind it could be 60 feet. It's, it's out of scale, and um, uh, for better or for worse, there's, there's a lot of vacant multifamily uh, lots in Spinard dozens and dozens and dozens of them that aren't being, uh, that are th th even at the, at any level they aren't being uh, developed. We need development, but just uh, not on this scale. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There are no questions. Anybody who's supposed to test friend this item, please come forward. Anyone at all? Hearing and seeing no public testimony, close the vote. Switch to the body, Ms. Dabowski. Uh, move to approve AO number 2015-100. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Ms. Dabowski, second by Ms. Johnston. Amy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. I think, sir. We need to have a motion to either change the order of the day or we need to postpone indefinitely items 13A and 13B prior to taking up 13C. Rod Roger that. We can do that. Um, Mr. Chair, I move to postpone indefinitely item 13A. Is there a second? Ask unanimous consent to postpone indefinitely. Mr. Hall? Yes. Let's put it on the board. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, start voting. You voted to postpone this indefinitely. Mr. Hall voted yes already. That's postponed indefinitely. Mr. Chair, I move postpone indefinitely item 13B, AO 2015-76. <coughs> Moved in second to postpone indefinitely. Mr. Hall? Yes. Okay. Please vote. Mr. Hall voted yes on that. That's postponed indefinitely. Now we've got in front of us AO 2015-100. Ms. Dombowski. Um, do I have to make another motion to, uh, move to approve? All right, I'm good to go. You're fine. I got my parliamentarian over here. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move amendment number one. I believe it was passed out to everybody. I think I got everybody in the beginning. It's uh, amend exhibit C, page 7 through 12, subsection 21.07.110C.8 to read as follows. Um, the Northern Climate Weather Protection and Sunlight Menu building and site design shall respond to Alaska's northern climate, including the effects of snow, ice, low temperatures, wind exposure, and low seasonal sunlight conditions, which impacts the pedestrian environment and living ab livability of denser compact housing areas by providing at least four features from the following menu on buildings comprised of eight, more, eight or more units. Moved and seconded. 
Discussing your amendment, Ms. Dombowski? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There, there's going to be a, a series of three amendments here, all, all under the same su subsection. And uh, many of the options simply doesn't, do not apply to small multi multifamily buildings. Examples would be uh, sheltered pass passenger loading zones, transit stops, bicycle parking, um, atrium, stepped or terrace buildings. Um, and many of the, uh, of the list of menu options are simply difficult to understand how they would be interpreted in the absence of illustrations and modeling. It's because of that. Um, I've had talks with um, Chris, Judy, and Erica just during the break, and they um, seem very amenable to meeting with some of the um, industry professionals to get some of these illustrations and have examples that they can rely upon for builders. So I think that's just one way to help uh, add clarity. And so I urge approval. Any other discussion from some members on the amendment? Mr. Hall, do you want to discuss the amendment at all, sir? No, I support it. Okay. In the discussion with some members, not seeing any. Mr. Hall, please vote on the amendment. Yes. Okay, please vote. That amendment is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I move amendment number two? Yes, ma'am, you may. Thank you. Amendment number two is to amend exhibit C page seven through fifteen to read as or seven fifteen to read as follows. It'll strike the section N and replace it with a new section N, director approval. Other methods not listed in this menu may be approved by the director following a finding that the proposed alternative methods effectively address northern climate considerations. Mr. Chairman, the Mr. intent. Mr. let me get a second oh, for thanks. you. Thank, Thank you. you, Jennifer. Uh, Mr. Chair, the intent of this, and you'll see that in the next uh, amendment as well, is um, to be consistent with the feelings throughout the committee process that we want to give the director as much flexibility and discretion in uh, moving some of these pro projects forward. Obviously, some of these northern climate design elements and everything um, are evolving, and so I think this gives the director not just another tool in his toolbox in order to get it done effectively. Discussion from assembly members. Mr. Hall, any discussion, sir? No, I support amendment? the amendment. Okay. Please vote then. You're first, Mr. Hall, on the amendment. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is approved by the body. Mr. Bowski, amendment number three. Thank you, sir. I move amendment number three to amend Exhibit C, page 7-15, to read as follows. Um, o, Section O, Director Discretion. The Director has the ability to reduce the number of required features and circumstances where site conditions or scale of buildings do not support the features provided in the menu options. Could I get a second on her amendment? Ms. Johnston seconded discussion, Ms. Dombowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, we want to make sure that the, the Director is the one person who is going to have the opportunity to see the totality of the entire site, the plans, everything, and the recommended um, path forward. And I think this gives him yet another tool in his toolbox to make um, decisions that are appropriate to fit the neighborhood and fit the site. Discussion from assembly members. Mr. Hall, any discussion, sir, on this amendment? Support the amendment. Okay. No discussion. Please vote. Mr. Hall, you're first. Yes. That is approved by the assembly. Amendment number four, Ms. Dombowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Wait a minute. I just messed that one up. I'm so sorry. Can we reconsider amendment number three? I was working from my old page. Yeah, no, no, no. I did mess it up. I promise. I need to reconsider it. Motion is to reconsider it, seconded by... I'll, I'll move or second or whatever. Okay, Mr. Flynn moved to reconsider it, second by Jennifer Johnson. Mr. Hall. Uh, Mr. Chairman, clear, uh, clarify for me what the motion is. Move to reconsider amendment number three. Ms. Dombowski, the maker of the motion, wants to reconsider it. Yes. Okay, please vote. Uh, 
Members reconsidered. Ms. Dombowski, we're back to amendment number three, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, just in consultation with Eric McConnell earlier, there's a better way to write this. So amendment number three, I would like to move amend exhibit C, page 7-14, by inserting new language at subsection 21.07.110C.8 to read as follows. The director has the ability to reduce the number of required features and circumstances where site conditions or scale of buildings do not support the features provided in the menu options. Ultimately, what we're doing, it's the same thing, except where we're putting it in Title 21, it's just at the end of a paragraph, if that helps. The second on that is Ms. Johnson, as soon as she says second, and she's done that. Any discussion from assembly members? If not, please vote on amendment number three again. Mr. Hall. Yes. Okay. Please vote. That is approved by the body. Now amendment number four, Ms. Dombowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I apologize for that last one. I was working for my rough draft, not my updated draft. <laughs> okay. It's all right. Amendment number four. I move amendment number four to read amend exhibits, or it will uh, amend exhibit C, page 7-1, subsection 21.07.110B.1, to read, oh boy, um, essentially, do I have to read the whole thing? Okay, I'll read it. 21.07.110B, alternatives and flexibility. Number one, alternative equivalent compliance. The alternative equivalent compliance procedure set forth in subsection 21.07.010D may be used to propose alternative means of complying with the intent of this section. Structures over eight units may apply directly to the Urban Design Commission for alternative compliance with plans at least 10% complete that include exterior elevations and dimensions, floor plans, landscaping, and parking plans. Is there a second on that? Ms. Johnson seconded it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The discussion, and, ma'am? Yes, sir. I just want to um, add a little bit of clarity, and um, Chris Schutte might have something to say on this. I'm not sure. But um, I saw him walking away. Um, but essentially, there was a lot of discussion whether we should lower it to 10 or 15 percent. And it's my understanding that from the department's perspective, they don't know that they could different differentiate a 10 or 15 percent plan. So they were fine with going with 10 percent. Um, understanding that they're going to be developing their own internal guidelines. Um, basically, if somebody submits a 10% plan and then they come back with something totally different, the department could reject it. So that's something internally that they're going to work on, um, but there was concurrence that this would be acceptable to them. Mr. Flynn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I'm going to ask for a head nod from the audience. Mr. Potter, where do you sneak off to? There he is. He's there. You said 15, correct? Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move to amend 10 to 15. I'm fine with that. I'll second it. <coughs> Is that amending the amendment? Amending the amendment. Amending yes. the amendment. So what's in front of us now is to vote on changing it from 10 to 15. Yeah. So any other discussion on the amendment of the amendments in front of us? Mr. Hall? Yes. Okay. Please vote. So we've approved that. So what's in front of us now, if you'll scratch on your document 10 and make it read 15. So we have amendment number four as amended in front of us. We just voted on amending the amendment. Now I, have to vote on. I know, have to, that's why I'm getting, I'm getting this there. Slowly, but I'm getting this there. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? If not, we'll start with you, Mr. Hall. Yes. Please vote. That is approved. Ms. Dombowski, your last amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move amendment number five to amend exhibit C, page 7-18 by deleting subsection 21.07.110C.10. 10.d.iii landscaping and mr chair what this would do is it would essentially the planting beds that mr potter referred to in his public testimony it would it, it would it would delete that subsection. wipe them out yep 
Ms. Johnson, you seconded that? Okay. Discussion from assembly members? Not seeing any. We're going to vote on this. Mr. Hall? Yes. Please vote. That was approved of the body. Mr. Ambassador, we got all five amendments as amended. Yes, sir. Ms. Ms. You want to discuss the main issue? Yes, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I appreciate um, the opportunity. Um, I also want to just especially thank Ms. Johnston, Mr. Evans, Mr. Hall, um, Erica McConnell. I don't know where she went, but she was here somewhere. Um, and Chris Judy. I mean, this has really been a collaborative effort. Um, and not to mention um, the members of PNZ that have taken part. Um, Mr. Potter's added input. Um, but this really has been a long process. This started with two different ordinances over six months ago. And through the Community and Economic Development Committee, we have been discussing this item for six months. And it's been both of the ordinances that combined to make this 100 um, have both been before public planning and zoning. So there has been really a robust amount of um, public opportunity to participate. At each community um, uh, committee meeting, the public's allowed to participate. So, um, you know, when I hear people make comments like, you know, this is rushed through, I know government works slow, but six months doesn't feel like a rush to me. So um, I just, this has been, again, just one of those opportunities to see the administration and the assembly and the developing community and the planning department come together. And I just, uh, I really want to thank Chris Judy for his efforts to make sure this, this happened. I really, really appreciate it. And I think it's uh, the right, uh, a step in the right direction. So I urge Thank approval. you, ma'am. Mr. Flynn, sir, on the document as amended in front of us. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, um, I'm sure you've noted in the voting pattern, I'm just, uh, have a bit of a contrarian streak this evening on this particular I thought matter. your button was just stuck. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you, the Title 21 is one of the more frustrating topics that we deal with uh, here on the assembly. And, you know, and I'll take my share of the blame. We allowed ourselves to spend a decade on the rewrite of Title 21. Mr. Potter referenced it. Took, you know, 15 years. And it's still not implemented. And, um, you know, is this a good idea? I can't tell you. <laughs> Nobody can tell you. All they can tell you is people have brought concerns forth without the policy actually being in place. And I'm sure, I know, there are flaws in the rewrite of Title 21. But until we actually exercise it, it seems premature to make amendments. And I will remind this body, those of you who were here when we finally did pass Title 21, that we deferred on the discussion of stream setbacks over my objections with the assurance that within a couple of months, we'd have a solution before us. That was more than two years ago. If we can't solve the problems we promised to solve, why are we problem solving problems we don't even know if we have? So I'm going to vote no on this, um, and it's not because I don't believe in the work that the people who serve on the Community Development Committee did. It's not because I don't believe in the hard work of the administration and the department. But I, we just we, we keep kicking the can down the road, and we're not getting anything done, and I can't support it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Ms. Johnston. Mr. Uh, Franey. Mr. Hall. Yeah, I'd just like to be put in the queue. Well, before I go to Jennifer, I'm going to go right to you now, Mr. Hall. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, I would like to point out to Mr. Flynn, this plan has been in place. It's been optional uh, for the last year. Uh, we've had a number of contractors take a look at it and found out that we did have inherent flaws in it and were not able to achieve density that we were hoping for. So in working with them, it's where these amendments have come from. There have been individuals tried to use it. And uh, the one thing that they pointed out in a work session that we had with this uh, body was the fact that there was no flexibility or discretion inside of this for our own staff to be able to use to help move some of these projects ahead. 
I do think there's been incredible cooperation in putting uh, this amendment uh, together, the code rewrite, the amendments, and I would urge the body to support it. Uh, we are going to be living under this amendment beginning January 1. We're under this uh, new ordinance, and uh, we need to correct this so that we can have our contractors be able to work with it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Ms. Johnson, ma'am, thank you for waiting. Well, 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 well. Mr. Flynn, first of all, I think I heard him volunteer to replace me on the Community and Economic Development Committee because no I way. think you <laughs> When you say you don't know anything about this and what it's going to be doing, really, you know, seven or eight years can give you all sorts of enlightenment. Um, I, I listened to Ms. Selkraig, and, and she and I were on the committee together. And, and as I've said before to this body, when Title 21 was, I, don't, I am a Johnny Cun lately, only eight years, um, it was along the comprehensive plan, and instead of making it, um, instead of coming up with code that was, was mandated, we decided to get our place to the comprehensive code by menus. And the whole menu, uh, so it wasn't as prescriptive, and I have to tell you, Ms. Selkraig, there is a lot of wordsmithing many, many times over the whole intent was changed with menus, with wordsmithing, with going into detail one word at a time. Miss Osiander and I were the last people standing. And uh, when we finally did pass this, we knew that it was not perfect. But we also knew we had not been passing anything, so it had to go. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for Ms. McConnell because she stuck through all of this. And she knew also that we had a lot of work to do on this. And, and um, she started right away a year ago last summer by having a workshop. It was a two-day workshop. Correct? One, it seemed like two to me. Um, anyways, there's a workshop that I didn't attend all of it, but quite a bit of it, where everybody sat down and said, okay, we're trying to work with this code. And we have these issues. Some of the menu choices conflicted with others. We also had many just sort of um, um, inherent conflicts. We still haven't done definitions, haven't got um, a user manual. And last year, folks were upset with me for postponing it another year by having another year of having both old and new code. But it was needed because we didn't have the funds or the wherewithal in place to have somebody come up, maybe a consultant, to say what we did well and what we didn't do well. So we really had to depend on the community to see what was working. And a number of them spent their own time and money trying to decide which code they were going to be using and trying to pull the best of each. And we got a lot of great information. And it wasn't a matter of these folks wanting to do massive developments. We really had a confusing document on, on many cases. Um, so this, this ordinance 100 is not just a six month process. This has been well over a year. We had our first ordinance that we, after going through committee, we introduced last February. And then there was Ms. Dombowski and Mr. Hall's ordinance. And then we've all sat down with a new administration. And I think we've really done our best to come up with a compromise. Part of that compromise is we've gone back to giving some discretion to the director. And this is, you know, like anything in democracy, the pendulum goes this way and that way. When we were trying to do code, we were trying not to make prescriptive, so we had the menu choices, so that everybody could do anything they needed to do at the front desk. Well, now we've realized that we've got, we have issues with our menu choices, and we have issues with our prescriptive lack of prescriptiveness and wording. And so we do need to have the director have some, some flexibility, particularly if you're trying to apply the policy that we're trying to apply throughout Title 21, like um, Northern Community Design, 
like um, um, transition, and there is still transition from from zoning from low density to high density for our height. There is a transition there. What we have done, and when Mr. Flynn says we haven't done the setbacks of streams, the other thing that was supposed to be coming right up, and only one of the reasons I stayed on for another term was the land use map. And that isn't, that is supposedly going to be starting to be rolled out this fall. But I was staying on because I thought it was an integral part of Title 21. This ties some of these height transitions to the land use map as opposed to the current zoning because we've found now that we have some developments that should go in the, in the, in the comprehensive plan. They should be high density, but we don't have it in the land use map and we don't have it in zoning. So the developers are having to go through a very, very, um, intense zoning change, which isn't correct. So anyways, this is a first stab. I can't, you know, I, I wish all of you well as you take further stabs. The, the Title 21 does need work. It will continually need work. I really love Ms. Selcraig's idea of, I mean, it really, it's this thick, folks, and it should only be that thick. And if anybody wants to go back and try this process again, good on you because it, it's, uh, um, it might be needed. But in the meantime, please pass this. Any other comments from some members? I'm not seeing anyone in the queue. Ernie, you're going to get to vote first. Okay, please vote. That is approved with one noticeable no vote. You're consistent, my friend. You did what you said you were going to do. That is approved. And Amy, thank you so much for being the head of the committee. This is the first fruits of what you've been accomplishing. Thank you. Oh, it was a team effort. Thank you, though, Mr. Chair. Next item in front of us, item 14A. And Ms. Johnson says she wants to move the hearing for that. To October 27th. Ms. Johnson? Move to postpone to October 27th. Second. You, you got to open the Moved public in. hearing first, sir. Oh. I'm going to open the public yes. hearing. Just she wants to move it. So let's open the public hearing. But if anybody's here to testify, please come back on the 27th. Anyone all hearing and saying no on a continuous public hearing to our meeting of the 27th of October? Um, we have to vote on it, too. What? We can. Now, I, now, I now move to postpone this on the 27th. Moved and seconded. Mr. Hall, you want to be first? Yes. Okay. Please vote. Can you mark it down as a yes? Okay. That is approved. It will be in front of us on the 27th of October. Next item in front of us, item 14B, Ordinance AO 2015-61, an ordinance of the Exodusable Assembly to reauthorize certain boards and commissions by amending the sunset provisions in Anchorage Municipal Code sections 4.40.020, 4.40.030, Four point six zero point zero four zero four point six four point six zero point zero six zero. Wave reading. Okay. Public hearing this item is now open. Anybody wish to testify? Please come forward, state your courtesy for the record. Spare your last name and tell us what part of town you're from. Hearing and say no on public testimony is close to us wish the body. Move to approve. But moved and seconded. Um, amendments, discussion? Mr. Chair, I have an amendment. Ms. Dabowski? Um, I just, uh, I'll call it amendment number one. I just passed it out. Um, the purpose of this amendment is to provide support to the Chiyaki River Advisory Board and allow the board to function as intended. The text of the amendment reads, um, uh, it's page three of your ordinance, beginning at line three. 
Chugaki River Advisory Board, Section 6, Anchorage Municipal Code, Section 4.60.105 is hereby amended to read as follows. Um, the, uh, section B, so it's under 4.60.105, Chugak Eagle River Advisory Board. Section B, the municipal clerk or designee shall staff the board. Section E, this board shall terminate on October 14th, 2018, unless affirmatively continued by ordinance. Um, and if I can get a second. Um, that was seconded by Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair, the purpose of this, um, there was an internal audit um, that addressed some um, functional things that the board needed to do better, and the clerk's office has agreed to be the staff to the board. So essentially, you know, we, the clerk's office provides a, a recorder to, for their meetings and publicly notices their meetings. So essentially, that's what we're doing. We're taking the director of development services out as the staff support, and we're inserting the clerk's office. And um, this was agreeable to the clerk's office. Um, I checked with the clerk too, and she has no problem with it. Yeah. So I just so, want to make sure we weren't overloading them. Right. So essentially what this th this will do, and I want to thank um, the internal auditor because actually it was um, Mike. I don't know, there he is. Chadwick. Yeah, he gets all the kudos for this because as soon as the audit came out, he really coordinated and helped um, get them on the right path, and we just really appreciate that very much. Thank you. I approve. Of, I urge approval. Mr. Flynn, sir. Yeah, just a question. Um, Mr. Chadwick, can I borrow you just for a minute? Unfortunately, we're taxing my memory in ways that are probably going to be a little bit embarrassing to me. Um, if I recall correctly, the audit called for a one-year extension of the sunset date to review policies and procedures. Is that co roughly correct? Yes, Mr. Flynn, through the chair, that is correct. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Chadwick. So I guess I, my next question is for Ms. Domboski. First off, I don't understand the language change that you provoke pose in the second half of your amendment under Section E, it seems that they're do one thing does the same as the other. And secondly, I'm wondering um, why you chose to extend for three years as opposed to one. Um, well, in collaboration, number one, with um, Mr. Starr, who's not here tonight, mm -hmm. um, and the board, the issues that were raised in the audit have all been affirmatively been taken care of. Essentially, they were saying they weren't taking adequate minutes and some of the meetings, public notices had challenges. And um, we found just simply by talking to Debbie Osander, who's the chair of the board and getting the clerk's support, everything's ha have been, everything has been resolved. So um, the need to babysit really has gone away, frankly. So um, just like other boards and commissions, um, I feel like this has been affirmatively taken care of already. Um, and we're just trying to get them on a schedule of the typical three-year. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Johnston, ma'am. Yes, I, you raised Ms. Osander's name, and when we were doing Title 21, she actually had not been in favor of this board because she felt it was, it added another layer, an un, another unnecessary layer. So I need, on her behalf, to understand, has this become a central place for Eagle River zoning concerns, or is it still everybody goes to each of their own community councils, and then it comes to this, and then it goes to planning and zoning? It really has, Ms. Through the Chair, it really has become a local place where people can go, and um, you see multiple community councils all go to this one place and collaborate, and I can attest their last meeting I don't remember the date, but it was within the last month, for example. And we went there to talk about Chapter 10, and all the community councils showed up there, and so did um, a representative from Aklutna. So it really was a great, a great opportunity to have that one conversation rather than have six. And I can tell you, um, during that, this audit came up. We discussed it with the board, both Bill and I. And we asked the board what they wanted to do, and it was unanimous, Ms. Osander included, that they wanted this to get approved on a three-year cycle. And um, like I said, the board was very supportive of uh, staying in business, basically. Ms. Johnston, anything else, ma'am? Ms. Dabowski, any final comments before we vote on the amendment and uh, the main document? No, I don't think so. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, I just want to be very clear with the assembly that 
we recognize we didn't adequately staff this board and because of that we kind of set them up to make a couple mistakes but we have rectified it and um, the board takes it very seriously and I just want to reassure the body that um, everything that was brought up in the audit has been already addressed. Thank you. We're now going to vote on the amendment offered by Ms. Dombowski. Mr. Hall, you're first on the amendment. Please vote. That is approved by the body. We're now going to vote on the main document in front of us. 2015-61. Mr. Hall, you're first. Please vote. That is approved as amended. We now have in front of us for public hearing item 14C, Ordinance AO 2015-101, Ordinance Authorizing Disposal by, by Perpetual Non-Exclusive exclusive Electrical and Telecommunications Easement of, on Track 7A, Westmark Subdivision, School Edition. Public hearing this item is now open. Anybody wish to testify? Please come forward. Anyone at all? Hearing say no, the public hearing is closed. What's wish the body? Moved to approve. Second. But moved by Jennifer Johnson, second by Ms. Gray Jackson. Discussion from assembly members. If not, please vote. Mr. Hall, you're first. That is approved. Next item in the front of item 14D, Ordinance 2015-103, Ordinance authorizing the withdrawal from Heritage Land Bank inventory and placement into Heritage into Real Estate Services inventory lots 5, 10, 21, 23, and 40, and 42, Block 11, Lot 4, Block Wave 1. Wave reading. Thank you. This is Laurel Acres Subdivision. Public hearing on this item is now open. Anybody wish to testify, please come forward. State your name, Cody for the record. Spell your last name and tell us what part of town you live in. Hearing and saying no one. Public hearing is closed. Well, so wish the body. Moved by Ms. Johnson, seconded by Ms. Gray Jackson. Discussion from assembly members. If not, please vote. Herney, you're first. Please vote. That was approved by the body. Next item in front of us is ordinance is item 14E, ordinance AO 215-104, an ordinance authorizing disposal by a perpetual driveway. Let's see. An ordinance authorized disposal by a perpetual driveway access easement on Heritage Land Bank parcel 1091 legally described as Track B, Spring Hill Subdivision, PTN, Plat 73-7, for fair market value, real estate department. Public hearing on this item is now open. Anybody wish to testify, please come forward. Welcome. Hi, um, my name is Martha Marshall, M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L. -L. I live in Chugiak, I'm the owner of the property, and I'm just here to answer any questions if you have it. The um, property was about 20 years ago, I guess, split and part of it handed over to the HLB. And the driveway's been there since the 70s, and we're just trying to get the easement for it so that in the future we can sell or work on the property without having to worry about it. So. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Comments from assembly members, questions? Thanks for being here. Anybody else wish to testify, please come forward. Anyone at all? Hearing and say no on public testimony is closed. What's the wish of the body? Move to approve. Moved, in a, moved by Mr. Mbowski, seconded by Mr. Flynn. Discussion from assembly members. If not, Mr. Hall, you're first in voting. Yes. Please vote. That is approved by the body. Thank you for coming here, ma'am. Next item in front of us is item 14F. Resolution Air 2015-262, a resolution of the municipality of Anchorage uh, appropriating $540,000 for 
let's see, let me get that right again. 540000 $650 Waver. from the state of Alaska, Department of Health and Human Social Services, as a grant to the state direct federal bypass. Wave reading. Thank you. It's for public health preparedness and response for bioterrorism. Public hearing this item is now open. Anybody wish to testify, please come forward. Anyone at all? Hearing and seeing no one, public testimony is closed. What's the wish of the body? Moved by Ms. Johnson, seconded by E. Peterson. Discussion from assembly members. Then we'll vote. Mr. Hall, you're first. Yes. Please vote. That's approved by the body. Next item in front of side of 14G, resolution of 2015-263, a resolution on this Pally Vancouver appropriating $160,000 from the State of Alaska Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management and a contribution of $3,520 from the Anchorage Area-Wide Operating Fund 101, the Municipal uh, Management Department, Office of Emergency Management. Wave reading. 2015. Thank you, Ernie. Public hearing on the side of Mr. Open. If any wish to testify, please come forward. Anyone at all? Hearing say no, public hearing closed. What's the wish of the body? Okay, Moved by Ms. Johnson, seconded by Mr. Peterson. Any discussion from assembly members? Now, seeing any, Mr. Hall, you're first. Yes. Please vote. That is approved. Next item in front of us is on page seven. Item 14H, Resolution 2015-267, a resolution of the Municipality of Anchorage appropriating $400,000 from the 2015 Equipment Maintenance Internal Service Operating Fund 601 unrestricted net assets account to the Equipment Maintenance Internal Service Capital Fund 606 Public Works Department for safety code upgrades to the light duty shop facility Public Works. Public hearing on this item is open. Anybody wish to testify? Please come forward. State your name, Kurt, for the record, and spell your last name and tell us what part of town you live in. Hearing and saying no, and public testimony is closed. What's the wish of the body? Move to approve. Moved by Ms. Nabowski, seconded by Mr. Peterson. Discussion from assembly members? Not hearing any discussion. Mr. Hall, you're first in voting. Yes. Please vote. That is approved by the body. Next item in front of us is item 14I, Ordinance 2015-105, an ordinance of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly, amending Anchorage Municipal Code Section 12.25.040 to allow flexibility in managing municipal finances. Public hearing this item is open. Anybody wish to testify, please come forward. State your name, Curry, for the record. Anyone at all? Hearing say no and public testimony is closed. What's the wish of the body? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Gray Jackson. Move to postpone action until the meeting of October 27th. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's moved and seconded to postpone action until the 27th. Discussion from assembly members? If not, Mr. Evans? Uh, just wondering what the reason for the postponement is. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Evans, for your question, but my preference is to have a full body here to vote on this very important um, change to the municipal code. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, let's vote then. Mr. Hall, you're first. Yes. Please vote. That is approved. The item will come back in front of us again October 27th. The next item in front of us is item 14J. Ordinance 2015-113 in ordinance of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly, amending Anchorage Municipal Code Section 2.30.030 for wording more consistent with state statute and the municipal charter regarding executive sessions. Public hearing this item is now open. Anybody wish to testify, please come forward. Chief Jim Curry for the record. 
Anyone at all? Hearing say no and public testimony is closed. What's the wish of body? Move to approve. Moved by Mr. Flynn, second by Ms. Gray Jackson. Discussion from Assembly Members, Ms. Dombowski. Thank you. I feel Mr. Falsey's over there being way too quiet. So I wanted to give him the opportunity just to give a brief overview of what this will accomplish. Through the chair, thank you, Mr. Dombowski. You are Bob. legal counsel to the Assembly, sir. Go thank ahead. You, sir. Uh, the, the Assembly's executive session regime is governed by a state statute that serves as a backstop. This ordinance would bring the Assembly's language into greater compliance with that state statute. Any other discussion from Assembly members? If not, please vote. Mr. Hall, you're first. Yes. Please vote. Okay, that was approved by the body. We're now down to special orders. There are none. We're down to 16 unfinished agenda. There is none. We're down to audience participation. Is there anybody here that wants to address this on any issue that's not on our schedule tonight? Anyone at all? Okay, not seeing anyone. We're moving on. Assembly comments. Any assembly comments before we leave? Okay. No executive session. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Chairman. We're adjourned. <laughs>